Welcome once again to our tutorial on the circuit theory and uh, today in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to solve a network using the uh, Milman's theorem over here. Okay, so let's just uh, bring up our problem statement first. Okay, so here we have our problem statement which uh, states that using Milman's theorem find the current through uh, that of RL. Okay, so this is RL over here. That's our load resistor okay as well as uh, the voltage drop across it in the uh, circuit alongside so here's our uh, circuit as you can as I've just uh, you know shown you over here and uh, well we gotta find the uh, current that's flowing through uh, the RL as well as the voltage drop that occurs across it using Milman's theorem so using Milman's theorem so what we are gonna do is that we're gonna just uh, you know reduce this entire network using uh, the Milman's theorem okay and thereby uh, find the necessary things that I've there I mean I mean that's just asked in the problem okay so uh, let's just uh, go forward and uh, let's just do it so we know that uh, well uh the uh, you know if we just well need to reduce this network we uh, know that we can just reduce uh, well this network into this figure on the left okay and now you can see that well we can just basically well reduce it so in order to do that we need to find the uh, values of V and R of course so we know that from uh, the uh, Milman's uh, theorem over here we can uh, well find out the values of uh, V uh, well, and R as well so using uh, some uh, relationships so let's just find the value of R first so R as we know that well is uh, would be uh, given by well 1 by G which will be of course uh, the entire summation I mean the uh, reciprocated summation of the uh, conductances um, you know of all the um, arms over here so we can see that we have you know uh, voltage source and resistor arms uh, well three of them over here in this uh, network okay so we'll just go forward um, just reversing their uh, resistances so we just basically can write uh, the uh, conductances as well the reciprocal of the uh, resistances uh, basically so there it is just gonna write it down over here okay let's pull down the page a bit so we can see that well uh, R1 is equals to R2 is equals to R3 all are uh, well just given by uh, 4 ohms okay so I mean uh, they have well equal values as we can see so let's just put it over here uh, okay we're gonna get 1 by 4th plus that of 1 by 4th and then again 1 by 4th so we're gonna get well something like well 4 by 3 ohms as uh, the value of the uh, net resistance okay and now if we just go forward and uh, uh, try and find uh, the value of the net voltage over here then we're gonna get it as well so before that uh, let's just take a look at our uh, figure once again so we can see in the uh, uh, original figure we can see that well the uh, polarities of the uh, voltage source that's V1 over here well this is V2 and this is of course well V3 so we can see that the polarities of V1 and V2 well um, they just you know opposite to that of the polarity of V3 so generally we we would basically you know uh, follow a convention in which we'll just take the polarity of V3 uh, as well the uh, positive one whereas uh, the polarities of uh, V1 and V2 would be treated as negative because it's just you know against the uh, conventional uh, way of just selecting the polarity okay so uh, let's just uh, keep that in mind and uh, well we'll just well implement it over here so I'll, I'm just gonna write it down over here so I'm gonna write it as well minus V1 G1 well minus that of V2 G2 uh, and then plus that of V3 G3 divided by well uh, that's of course yeah G1 plus G2 plus that of G3 so again we know that uh, well G is of course I, I mean the uh, conductances are of course the uh, reciprocal of the uh, resistances so we have V1 by R1 minus that of V2 by R2 and again then we can get well plus that of V3 by that of R3 and then in the uh, denominator we can get well R1 1 by R1 plus that of 1 by R2 and then 1 by R3 so if we just go forward and put their uh, necessary uh, values over here so let's just check the values of V1 and V2 once again so well we know that V1 is of course 4 volts uh, okay V2 is 2 volts and V3 is 10 so just let's just keep that in mind so V1 is of course well 4 volts uh, there you go let's put the value of R1 as well which is also 4 ohms over here then uh, V2 is uh, 2 volts over there and then R2 is also 4 ohms and V3 is 10 okay 
So let's just put the uh, values of the uh, resistors also so down below in the uh, denominator concern. So there we go. So if this way we just go forward and uh, well solve it together, okay? So we're gonna get uh, at the bottom. I, I mean at the top we're gonna get well four divided by four, and at the bottom, well we're gonna get something like um, yeah three divided by four. So we're gonna get basically uh, four by three volts. Okay, so uh, that's going to be our equivalent uh, uh, voltage uh, offered by the uh, uh, voltage source of the uh, reduced network. Okay, so if we just go back to our reduced network once again, so we're going to get, well, V by, I mean, uh, this uh, net voltage V uh, coming from the voltage source is obviously equals to, well, 4 by 3 volts. And of course, the resistance uh, of the, uh, I mean, the net resistance of this network is also, well, 4 by 3 ohms. Okay. Now we need to uh, basically, uh, well, find the uh, current to that of RL as well asked in the um, problem statement. So let's just uh, go forward and do it over here. So we know that, well, the current, we, we can just, well, take a look at the uh, figure once again. So we know that uh, the current that's going to flow through RL, okay, there you go. Let's just uh, consider that it'll, it'll be given by uh, the term I over here. So we can basically find uh, I um, as, uh, well, if we just do bring the page down a bit so we can well find I as um, you know putting uh, the V on the uh, numerator here divided by uh, the summation of well RL plus that of the uh, series resistance I mean the internal resistance of the uh, network okay so let's just put the uh, values concerned so V would be of obviously well 4 by 3 uh, volts and then RL is 10 and we have R as also 4 by 3 uh, ohms. So now if we just go forward and solve this whole thing, we're going to get something like, well, 4 by 34 volts. Uh, sorry, there, 4 by 34 amps, okay? And now if we just, uh, well, go forward and reduce this thing over here, we're going to get it as, well, uh, about 0 0.12 amps, okay? That's the 0 0.12 amps of current that's flowing through that of the uh, RL. Okay, and now, uh, well, we can also express this as, well, 120 milliamps of current. That's basically, you know, flowing through that of RL. Okay, and also the voltage drop that's going to occur across that of RL would be given by, okay, I'm just going to put it as, well, VL. So this is going to be, well, I multiplied by the term RL. So if we just go forward and do it, well, 0 0.12 amps, uh, multiplied with uh, you know the uh, resistor i mean the resistance of uh, the load resistor is of course you know 10 ohms over here as you can see so basically the voltage drop occurring across uh, that of r i mean uh, the rl as the load resistor would be well uh, this multiplied by 10 so it's going to be well 1.2 volts so that's our answers concerned so we're just going to write it down over there well, let's say if we just uh, take the uh, voltage drop across uh, that of uh, RL as, let's say, if we just take it as VL, then we're getting the uh, voltage drop across RL as well, um, actually 1.2 volts. And, uh, you know, the current that's going to flow through RL in this uh, circuit, that's I, given over here, as equals to, well, 0.12 amps. So that's our answers using uh, the Milman's theorem. Easy, huh? So uh, we can just use this theorem in, uh, well, certain, uh, I mean, in this kind of problems where you can basically have, you know, lots of confusion about which one to choose and not to uh, in the, this kind of, you know, problems where you can just encounter, you know, multiple uh, number of voltage sources connected in parallel. Okay, so with that, we just come to the end of this uh, tutorial session uh, on uh, you know, the uh, Millman's theorem. So see you in the next one. And till then, it'll just be a short goodbye for now. And don't forget to watch our next tutorials. So thanks for watching.